Today we're going to be talking about the things that you should be looking for when you're thinking about buying a used sunfish sailboat. We actually have nine of these boats and I can't really tell you that the ones that are beat up and a little cosmetically edgy sail any different than the ones that are pristine. Just because the boat you're looking at has some of the flaws I'm pointing out in this video, it doesn't mean that the boat is a lemon or something you shouldn't buy because it really just affects more of what price you're paying for the boat. So I haven't really seen where it really makes a big difference in the speed of the boat. All of the Sunfish sailboats have a serial number on the back right hand corner of the hull. And the last two digits of the number reflect what year the boat was manufactured. Most of the Sunfish that are on the used market you'll come across are usually manufactured somewhere in the 70s to maybe the early 80s. In the state of Florida, you're not required to have a title or registration to own and operate a boat of this size without a gas motor. You would want to check with your state with the Department of Motor Vehicles to see if titles are required for this type of vessel in your state. I have seen one boat we bought that was from Michigan and it did have float numbers on it. Here's a boat we bought that came from Michigan and you can see it actually had a float registration on it. A lot of times on the bottoms of these boats they've been repainted. So if you turn them upside down and you start looking underneath this lip right here and you'll see a little bit of the you know the overpaint and whatnot and you come along and you can see it'll be real obvious where you know the patches have been made. There's another spot that when the boat was right set up it wasn't real obvious that there had been a repair made here on the nose. Press up and down and you'll see that some of these the ribs have delaminated from the, the fiberglass. Now I haven't really noticed that this way affects the speed much. A solid right here. That's the way it's supposed to be. We can even get sometimes some of the little spider cracks, maybe where the ribs are actually. You can see that's where that rib is right there. The drain plug, which is located on the right side of the boat, is made of metal, and typically these will get so rusted and crowded up that you can no longer remove the, the plug. You have done some draining. Go ahead and put a little bit of motor oil or grease or something in the threads of that. A lot of these boats I came across, people have actually added these aftermarket plastic drain plugs, which are a substitute for the brass one. One of the other things that you want to look at is this aluminum railing that goes around the side. And if you examine closely, a lot of times right on the rivets, you'll see where the salt water has begun to corrode through. And a lot of times pieces of this will break off right at the rivet and you'll lose chunks of this rail. The rivets have actually corroded off this one. And this whole thing, even though the rivet's still there, you can see where the hole is. This whole thing is starting to come off. Take a look at where all your cleats are screwed down. It's very common that a lot of times these have been pulled out of the deck for some reason and maybe re-screwed a little bit over. There's actually the cleat up here in the front. I've seen a lot of these where these have actually pulled out and you'll have a couple holes there. And then the owner has either moved it over and put new holes or they put a patch there or something like that. And the same with your, your pulley for your mast uh, raising your sail. You check and see if there's any damage around this where it's been re-screwed down or, or cracked or something like that. These front handles you know, always crowed. They're, I've never seen one that hasn't. It's, um, it's replaceable. You can buy them you know, online, but um, there was a lot of times they will crowed out right here on the edge. You can see this one's starting to crowd up pretty good and they'll, they'll break off right there and then the whole handle will break off. It is in your centerboard well, just check to see if there's been any damage top and bottom to where there might be any type of separation you know or leak you know sometimes these boats will leak around the centerboard well check right up here in this um area where the centerboard well meets the bottom fiberglass and see if there's any separation or there's been any patching or something like that in it for sheeting the boom a lot of these boats have had an extra pulley added to them this did not come factory but you notice this one actually has already pulled out you know one screw on the on the on the pulley itself this little piece of brass hardware here and what this is for is when you pull your sail down through here the rope wraps around there and it helps you to hold it so it doesn't get your arm tired when you're sailing and i've seen a lot of boats that are missing this here that this right here is the is the drain plug for the cockpit this is one of the original ones they came originally in this uh, metal aluminum pot metal whatever it is and these things always get corroded up and stuck uh, this is replaceable with a new more modern uh, white plastic model that has a, a ball bearing underneath it to work as a backflow preventer and that item I believe costs about $40 online but there again you don't have to have this um, you know you can also bail it out as you go and even if the cockpit does fill with water it doesn't fill the rest of the inside of the boat because this cockpit is totally sealed from the rest of the you know flotation of the boat 
here's the bottom side of the cockpit drain. You can see how it's like a scoop shaped thing so as the water passes over it'll have kind of a suction effect which pulls the water out of the cockpit. Um, there's typically a ball up in here which when the boat is not moving it floats back up and makes it seal off so that it doesn't uh, backwards flow so it doesn't backflow water into the cockpit. A lot of times that ball is missing. Here's what the aftermarket plastic drain siphon looks like. This is on the bottom side and you can see that it has that rubber marble that works as a backflow preventer. I've seen a lot of these boats where this cable has either deteriorated or been replaced. The original, which this is the original right here, it came and it has a loop in there which the rope attaches to which goes to the boom. So a lot of times I've seen these where it's just a piece of wire with no loop and they basically made it out of some type of you know, hardware wire or something. The end of the rope that goes through the boom, which you use to haul the sail in with, will usually have a nice brass cleat that clips onto that wire we spoke of between the two cleats on the back of the stern. Not to say you have to have this, because you could just tie it in a knot, but this is just a nice uh, original fitting. This right here is an aftermarket access hole that's been added to this boat. But you can see they do have star foam inside them. So I guess if it was swamped for a long period of time, could it get waterlogged? Probably so. I need about 60 seconds of your time, and they'll be right back, and we'll talk about a few other things you got to look at when buying a used sunfish. Okay, before we finish this repair, I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need e any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair? What's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments. Okay, one of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came he took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent, okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you are probably thinking, hey, I'm a good person. I've done so many nice things in my life for people. Surely God wouldn't look on me unfavorably. But the Bible actually says that by grace, you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust in what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. Okay, now let's get back to our repair. And I'll have some more information on it for you on that at the end of the video. A lot of times on your centerboard and your rudder, people have refinished these and they've used polyurethane and you can see basically what happens when they do polyurethane. I think a lot better solution to this is to sand it down and actually use fiberglass resin, you know, to overcoat it, you know, and you won't get that peeling like that. A common problem with the rudders that you see a lot of, see how this one has a crack right through here where that bolt goes through? I've seen a lot of these like this. It's a very easy fix. This one has not been fixed yet. Here's one that had that split that we spoke of. And what we did was we drilled through the backside of this rudder and we screwed in some three inch stainless steel screws that go all the way through both sides of the split. This one's actually missing the spring that runs from this pole to this pole. And that's when the rudder goes up and down. It kind of locks it in either up or locks it into down. Uh, again, I've seen a lot of these where the spring has broken and may be missing. Uh, haven't seen too much issue with this. It just springs up and down. Um, obviously, if you're looking at a boat, make sure it's not froze up or something if it hasn't been used in a while. Just like that. Um, I have not seen a lot of these where, or any of these actually, where there's been any damage on this, but certainly a good thing to see if there's any uh, redrilling or any patchwork. The rudder originally came in three sections. The rudder, the handle, and then the handle extension. On about half the boats you'll come across, this extension a lot of times is missing. 
it's, it's real easy to make another one out of wood and just reattach it. It just has a stainless steel bolt that goes through both pieces so it can swivel. Here's one of the center boards that that bolt has corroded through that goes through these three pieces of wood. And you can see that the piece dropped down. Again, a very easy fix. We're just going to get a stainless steel bolt, redrill it, and put it back together. One of the things you want to look for when you're inspecting your mast is a lot of times you have little holes that'll pop up like this from corrosion, particularly if they've been used in the salt water. And I've actually seen some of these where the mast will actually snap in half from interior corrosion inside the pipe. A lot of times when these go sailing, and if the boat tips over, or even if the mast is in the hole and the water gets in the hole, then salt water or fresh water can get inside the mast itself. And when you tip it back and forth, you'll hear the water sloshing back and forth. So one of the things I've done to correct this, go and drill a small hole into the side of your uh, mast up near the top, into the plastic on the bottom. So now you can see where I'm taking the hose and I'm filling the pipe up inside. We drain the pipe back out to get all the salt residue out of there. This will extend the life of your aluminum rods on these boats significantly, especially if you're working in salt water. The sails, are pretty obvious when you look at them you know you'll either see holes in them or you won't uh, a lot of times the sails have been folded and where the sunlight was hitting one section of the sail like in this particular sail you can see where the red right here is real dark and you get right to here where it's very light in color and that's because that's where it was rolled and that's the part that was exposed to the sun where it was being stored here's a hole right here and Again, this hole right here is not an overly big concern. They make a sail tape product that you can buy at you know, the marine store and literally just peel and stick a piece of tape you know, onto that hole and you'll be fine. On this sail right here, when we got it, it actually had a big tear all the way across here and down through here. And so by buying just a one yard piece off of eBay of the Dacron polyester sail material, we cut a piece like that and on our household sewing machine, we did a zigzag pattern with some exterior thread and sewed it right up. One nice feature some of the aftermarket sails have is this clear window. Sometimes you'll have a repair where this ring is attached to the aluminum uh, piping for the boom. And a lot of times what will happen is it'll begin corroding because of the two different metals underneath this brass ring. And it's very common that these aluminum beams will snap in half right there at the point where this brass touches the aluminum. I have another video that shows how to repair this and it's very easy to do. On this particular sail, somebody else has done a repair here and they've just slipped a collar over the top of the brake and put a couple rivets through it. Uh, actually on my video I show you how to do it from the inside so it doesn't have this outside piece on there. A lot of the sails that you'll come across also will be missing some of these snap rings. Uh, these are almost like shower curtain rings. You know, they're not shower curtain rings, but they look like it. And you can buy these on eBay and um, add the ones that you're missing. Now, interestingly, most all the sails you come across have those snap rings like that. But interestingly, when you look at this sail over here, this is an aftermarket sail, and it was actually sewn so that the sleeve, you know, the boom and the um, mast portion go through the actual sail itself. It's Make sure you have both your pulleys on there. I've seen a lot of these where this hoop ring right here will end up breaking off or uh, coming off. Again, not a big deal because you can just re-screw it in at a different spot. But make sure you have both of them in place. Another thing you might want to take a look at on your sail is on the end tips, a lot of times where the bolt goes through, it'll corrode the aluminum to the top there and then these plastic caps will pull off. You can see on this particular sail that this one actually broke through where that hole was originally drilled. And so to fix it, basically another hole was drilled and the bolt was put through the um, other direction. Hey, I hope this video has helped you on the repair that you're working on right now. As far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you've paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. 
I know you are the Son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.